Hello everyone, I'm Shubhendra Vyas. I'm a lead data scientist at Nielsen and I'm starting this channel Data Science Using Python. I'm going to share videos on a weekly basis on topics like introduction to Python, data analysis using Python, machine learning and automation using Python. So today's session is going to be on data science using Python. Let's go through the agenda for today. So first we are going to through understand what is data science, what is artificial intelligence, what is machine learning, what is deep learning, why we want to use Python for learning data science. Then we will go through the life of a data scientist and then at the end I have a quiz for you. You can answer in the comment section. So what is data science? Data science is a science about data. To perform data science, you need massive amount of data, right? And in data science, we try to extract meaningful insights from raw structured or unstructured data using scientific methods, different technologies and algorithms. On the right hand side, you can see an awesome diagram which shows that data science is a mix of multiple skills. The skills like mathematics, computer science, domain expertise, statistics, machine learning and data processing. So in short, we can say that data science is all about asking the correct questions and analyzing the raw data, modeling the data using various complex and efficient algorithms, visualizing the data to get a better perspective and understanding the data to make better decision and finding the final result. What is artificial intelligence? Artificial intelligence is a conglomeration of concepts and technology that means different things to different people. Right? So some will say artificial intelligence is about self-driving cars. Some will say it's robots that impersonate humans. Right? Some will say artificial intelligence is machine learning. And they all are at some what level are correct. Right? So if you ask me what is artificial intelligence, the first thing which comes to my mind is you know Terminator or let's say the Avengers Age of Ultron, or maybe the iRobot movie, right? So that's what artificial intelligence has for me. But if you want to understand a more geeky definition of artificial intelligence, you should refer to this diagram. So what artificial intelligence is, it's a technique which helps computer to mimic human behavior. What is machine learning? So machine learning is a subset of AI techniques which use statistical methods to help machines improve with experience. What is deep learning? So deep learning is again a subset of machine learning which makes the computation of multi-layer neural network physical, right? So in interviews, this is a very common question for data science interviews, right? What is the difference between artificial intelligence, machine learning and deep learning, right? So you can always use this diagram because it covers all the aspects of comparison between AI, machine learning and deep learning. Also, whenever we talk about artificial intelligence, there is always a discussion on strong AI versus weak AI. So what is a strong AI? So strong AI are robots in fiction. They're not developed yet, right? So robots like Ultron, Terminator, or an iRobot, right? They all are self-aware robots who can take decision on their own. So they are termed as strong AI, right? What is weak AI then? So weak AI is like the AlphaGo program, right? Because it can do a particular kind of task only. It cannot play chess, it can play only AlphaGo game, right? In the same way you have Alexa, Siri, Corona, they all are weak AI right because they can do only a particular kind of task and they are not self-aware they cannot take decision on their own next what is machine learning so machine learning is a concept which allows the machine to learn from examples and experience and that too without being explicitly programmed right so if you want to understand machine learning in a simple way there is an example for recommendations right whenever you go to shop online whenever you buy a product you always get these recommendations that the customers who bought this item they also bought this right or let's take a netflix example whenever you watch a movie on netflix Whenever you go next time, you always have some recommendations from Netflix side on the basis of genre you have seen earlier, right? So in machine learning, we use the data to train our algorithm and then we use the training to predict the outcome for next time, all right? So if you want to understand what are the types of machine learning we have, there are main three types of machine learning. First is supervised learning, second is unsupervised learning, and third is the reinforcement learning. First, I'll talk about reinforcement learning. So reinforcement learning is a reward based learning method in which you have an agent 
which learns from the environment and if it that agent is going towards achieving the goal then you will have some rewards if it is not achieving the goal then you will have some punishments or penalty right and our goal is to maximize the rewards right so this is what reinforcement learning now let's talk about supervised learning right so in supervised learning again can be divided into two types which is regression and classification right regression have some famous algorithms like linear regression logistic regression and decision tree regression terms is a continuous type of you know predictions for example the predictions of sales the prediction of number of passengers or the prediction on how many people will get infected from covid 19 right so this all will come under regression supervised learning whereas in classifications you have discrete outputs right outputs like whether this person has diabetes or not diabetes whether we should give loan to this person or we should not give loan right so we will decide or predict all this on the basis of data that we have in our training data set, right? So some famous algorithms for classifications are naive based, support factor machine and k nearest neighbor, right? So what is unsupervised learning? So unsupervised learning is again classified into two types, which are clustering and dimensionality reduction. K-means clustering is one of the famous algorithm on the clustering side. And for dimensionality reductions, we have principal component analysis, feature selection, and linear discriminant analysis. Now, whenever you go for a machine learning or a data scientist interview, the common question will be, what is the difference between supervised and unsupervised learning, right? So in supervised learning, you have much clarity on the output or what you want to predict, right? As I said, continuous or discrete output. Whereas in unsupervised learning, your output is not that much clear. Let me take an example to make this more clear, right? So in, in supervised learning, you will have a training data set and a testing data set. You will have much clarity on what kind of output you are looking for, right? So let's say this is my training data set and we are going to do a machine learning right now, right? So if I give you input as one, you are getting the output as one. If I give input as two, you are getting the output as four. If I give you the input as three, now you're getting the output as nine. So this training data set all these rows will be used by your algorithm or model to learn, right? Now, once your model is trained, your model will try to come up with a relation between the input and output. Now, if you know basic math, I think by now you have resolved that the relation between the input and output is y is equal to x squared, right? This is what your model will also come up with. And now I'm going to give some data points of the testing data set, which is not shown to my training data set. And I'm trying to predict the output. Right? So if I give 11 as input, yes, you predicted it correctly, the output will be 121. And if I give 10 as input, the output will be 100. Now, how we are coming with this output on the basis of this relation, right? So this is supervised machine learning and we'll show you how very much clarity on the output. Now, let's talk about unsupervised machine learning, right? So again, you will have a training data set and a testing data set. For unsupervised machine learning, as I said, we have to form clusters, right? So let's say we want to do a customer segmentation problem, right? You want to segment or cluster the customers on the basis of their purchasing behavior, right? So we have data on these four features, fresh products, milk products, grocery items, and frozen items, right? So these are, let's say, the number of units that a particular customer buy for one year right and now we want to form clusters on the basis of this purchased units right and if a new customer comes of course we'll have the data for these four features from that new customer and then we'll simply say this customer will belong to this cluster one or cluster two right there will be customer which can you know belong maybe in the middle of a cluster that's why we don't have that much clarity on the output one more thing in training data set you don't have any column for output as you have in supervised machine learning right so here in unsupervised machine learning your output is not predetermined it is not fixed you have to form clusters and whenever a new data point comes you will suggest that maybe this data point belong to this cluster or to that cluster all right so next what is deep learning deep learning is a subfield of machine learning concerned with algorithms empowered by the structure and function of the brain called artificial neural network right so deep learning is the idea you know like how a human brain works right they they define deep learning on the basis of the neurons that we had in our mind right so then the question comes what is the difference between machine learning and deep learning right so in machine learning when you have 
uh, input, you always have a human element to extract the future, right? So we always get a training data set for our machine learning problem, right? Who prepares the data set? A human, right? Or maybe we are collecting surveys for that data, right? Once those features are extracted, we will be giving those features to a model and then you will get the output as a car or not car. So this is what happens in machine learning. What is the difference in deep learning is we don't have any human to extract the features. We will directly give the image as input or maybe a video as input or maybe an audio as input. And then the model itself will create the features from the image or from the video, right? Once the feature extraction is done, we will have some hidden layer or an output layer which will classify that to which category this particular image belongs. Maybe it's an image of a car or it's an image of a not car. Right? So only one difference is that we won't have a human to extract the future as we have in machine learning plus deep learning problem needs a more you know, expensive computing resources right because a big data is involved of course you can imagine going through 10,000 images will be much more you will need much more computing power to do that. Alright so the Data science course, why, why we are going to use Python? So the first thing is usage, right? Python is generally used for all the tasks, you know, from A to Z. So you can use Python for data analysis. You can use it for website development. You can use it for, you know, GUI app development. You, of course, use it for machine learning. And of course, Python is very famous for doing automation of some manual tasks, right? So Python is a full stress language. It provides you all these facilities. Second, why we want to use Python is the ease of learning, right? So Python is considered as the easiest language to learn for starting programmers. Now, this is debatable because as for some people, Python is not that much easy to learn, right? They say maybe they will prefer R, which is another language for doing a data science work, right? So they say R is more easier. But this is, you know, my opinion that I found Python much more easier to learn in comparison to other language, right? So again, it is debatable, but I will say Python is an easier language to learn. The last and the most important, or I will say, this is what you know powers the Python, the open source community, right? So Python is an open source. Of course, you don't have to pay any money or any licensing fee to use Python. Of course, there is a huge open source community. So if you get stuck in some program, or if you're having some issues or bugs in Python, you can of course go to the community and you can find multiple threads on famous websites like Stack or a few other websites for the same problem, right? So. There it is, that why you want to use Python to learn data science. Alright, let's try to understand the life of a data scientist, right? So what a data scientist do throughout his job, right? So data science extracts knowledge, insights or solutions from big data, right? So here is a look of at the life of a data scientist. So which data scientist methods or data science method a data scientist use? So first logistic regression, classification and regression trees algorithms like decision tree, random forest, and then some neural network. Right? What are the languages used by a data scientist? Of course, Python is there on the top. Then a data scientist also uses languages like R, SQL, SAS, SPSS, and Scala. Right? What are the barriers that is faced by a data scientist to do a great data science work? Right? The first barrier is a dirty data. Right? So, whatever project you do in data science, 80% of the time you will be spending on you're making your data ready for the models, right? So dirty data is one of the barriers. Then data science talent, right? So there are so many blogs over the internet which says that there is a shortage of data science talent all over the world, right? That's why people are attracted to this profile. So in reality, we have a shortage of data science talent as of now. And the third is the financial support, right? So data science, uh, you know, requires huge amount of money, all the projects. Uh, they need a large amount of money plus if you want to do data science courses also they are also very costly so if in india if you want to go for a data science course it will easily cost you around six to eight lakh rupees right so these are some common barriers which are faced by people in doing great data science work all right the interesting part what is the average salary of a data scientist so if in india so this is all salaries are as per the indian standards of course they can vary city wise in india itself so for fresh years it is you know six lakh per annum for little much more experienced people from five to eight years this range can be from 10 lakh to 12 lakh rupees 
and for more experienced people like from 9 to 12 years this can range from 15 lakh to 18 lakh rupees per year of course this is the average salary there can be people who can earn more than this or less than this this is just the average salary which i can get right now the type of data that is used by data sciences is relational data text data and image data right what's the education of a data scientist right so master degree bachelor degree and certification from a data science institute or i will include phd in this also right so earlier there was a myth that only the people which has phd they can become data scientists right that's that's not true i have seen people who are not even from engineering background they are coming and joining the data science field and they are having very successful career right so this there is no barrier on the education side doesn't matter from which background you are if you can you know do some data science courses from some good institute you are ready to join the data scientist field all right so it's quiz time so i want all of you to you know use the comment section to answer this that who this guy is thank you guys for going through the session and also if you have any questions on you know data science artificial intelligence machine learning please feel free to post it in the comment section thank you stay safe take care happy learning